I'm going to make a start, folks. Um, warm welcome to you. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm your host for this session, Saf Bal Singh. I'm one of the trustees of Agile Twitter Reflect. Um, most people know me as Saf. Uh, it's a real privilege and honour to be to be hosting this session. I didn't I didn't know I didn't know Mike. But I'm very much looking forward to learning more about his life and his work from those who knew him best. Um, as this is an Agile 20 Reflect um, festival event, um, we do have a, a code of conduct, a community policy. Um, in short, we just ask that everyone be respectful to one another. We want everyone to have a great experience. Um, we will have a number of different things that we will do throughout the session. Uh, we'll facilitate. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope. yeah, I hope it's a great session for you all. And um, I'm going to hand over to Scott, who's got a short video he would like to play.
Thanks, Scott. So Agile 20 Reflect is we create this free global festival to, to mark and celebrate the 20 years since the original authoring and signing of the manifesto. Uh, and before we take a look at some of Mike's contributions to the Agile industry over that, over that period, we'd like to start by inviting you to share a few memories from Mike's early years and his, his childhood. So does anybody would like to, to share a few memories from, from that period of Mark, Mike's life, we'd be, we'd be delighted to welcome you to do so. If you could raise your hand, just so I could spot you and then we'll unmute you. If you could introduce yourself and just explain your relationship with Mike and feel free to share. <clears throat> Rick, I think I spotted Rick, you had your hand up. Can't yeah, see I, everyone. Uh, yeah. Please I guess I'll go on. first. Um, I think I met Mike face to face for the first time in uh, 2014. Uh, just so happened we're both from Chicago. And I, I was thinking about getting into training Scrum. I'd had a little bit of uh, a little success in training Scrum at, at the corporate level. And I noticed that he was teaching a class in the area. I took the day off work. I drove up just to get my, uh, my scrum book signed by him, the, the Beetle Schwaber book uh, signed by him. He invited me to start te uh, not teaching, but talking to the class. And uh, from then on, it was just, you know, every couple of months, hey, Mike, can we just talk about this topic? Can we talk about that topic? And it became sort of a... Uh, I don't know, sort of a mentor, mentor relationship with him. And for that, I couldn't be more grateful. He was my very first uh, mentor in the Agile community. Fantastic. Thank you, Rick. Um, if anybody would like to share from, from Mike's sort of childhood years or the early before we get into some of the sort of career stuff, that would be fantastic. John, you've got your, I can see your virtual hand up. I'm happy to invite you to share a few words. You're still on mute. Oh, sorry. I was just applauding Rick. <laughs> it's okay. Please. Oh, you didn't want to share a few words. Um, I can't see everybody, folks. So if you could raise your hand using the, the, the mechanism on Zoom, it'll be easier for me to, to spot you. And then I'll, I'll invite you to share, if you wouldn't mind. Alexandra, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Nice to see so many people. Sue, I salute you. I love you. My friend from New York, Barbara. Hi, Simon Roberts, that I know. Hello. I don't, I don't see everyone either. Um, I'm probably uh, one of the rare Canucks from up north. Now I'm exiled in Mexico because of the pandemic. Uh, and um, I met Mike uh, several times. And the last time was in March 2018, where I met Suryu uh, for the uh, last class of CBAC, I think he did uh, before uh, the unfortunate event. And uh, on the little video you showed before, Scott, uh, this is, that was a work collaboration between many people. Marina, Alex, I don't know if she's there. Um, anyway, that was a great bunch. Ulis, too. Uh, that was picture from many people. Uh, Anna Kishpeer, uh, probably uh, some that I don't know, uh, that, that I gather for the uh, one year. Uh, commemoration of Mike uh, leaving this uh, beautiful planet. So I just want to say hi to everyone that I know and those I don't know. And uh, I love you all. Namaste. 
Thank you, Alexander. That was great. Fantastic. Thank you. Anybody else? If you could just raise your virtual hand, then I'll be able to spot you. That would be fantastic. Just using the Zoom feature. Yeah, okay. So we'd like we'd like to hear a little bit more about sort of Mike's sort of university days uh, and his early time in physics. Can anybody share any memories from, from that that era of, of, of Mike's Mike's life? It would be great to hear a few things from, from, from that era. If you just raise your hand once again, we'll be able to spot you and invite you to, to share. Got anyone? Anybody willing? Anybody online who can speak to speak to that? It's going to swipe through. I don't. I don't see any hands up. I, Got anybody? I, I will say something very quick. Um, I, I think um, it's it's difficult to talk about Mike. He he was an extraordinary uh, leader, and one of the things that I remember the most is that he believed in you a lot. He, he strongly believed in your potential, and and that's why that was why so many people we follow him. I follow him because he he helped me realize that I have full potential, that I have a lot of potential, and that allowed me to 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 have a special uh, space in my heart with him because because he wanted he he always um, pushed that how to be a better yourself. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll speak. Please. I uh, first met Mike, uh, I think it was around 2013 for training for CSM uh, here in uh, New York City uh, at a Holiday Inn in Queens, um, Long Island City. Um, but uh, basically, he impressed me immediately as just being someone authoritative who actually had a deeper understanding of what he was trying to do as far as the methodology was concerned. And uh, I was very inspired by him. I can't say that for many people who I only meet in an instructor capacity. In fact, quite frankly, in the tech domain, there are a lot of terrible instructors, as you probably all know. But Mike uh, was not only uh, coherent, evocative, and informative, he was also, uh, as Ulysses uh, alluded to, uh, very engaging. You know, he, uh, he actually was a great teacher as well as a good man. Uh, I actually, uh, last time I saw him was in 2017. I went to an enterprise scrum thing in Midtown Manhattan. Ulysses, you were there. That's how we met. And uh, Daniel Mazik, I remember you were there as well. It was one of his first ones, I believe, uh, and uh, I got the CESPAP, uh, and that was the last time I saw him. I heard of his death, obviously, the next year, and that was, uh, there's not many people uh, in my life who, who their death actually saddened me heavily, but definitely his did, and, it, and I think it was a loss. Uh, I think he was uh, a good voice for this community, and um, he is missed, and that's why I'm here today. Thanks. Fantastic. Appreciate the share. Thank you. Anybody else? No, don't see any hands up. Nope. Uh, there we go. Right. Okay. So it'd be nice to, to talk a little bit about the Mike's work with the the, the open technology user group. Uh, we know he was a uh, very influential in that space. In the early years. Anybody share some experiences there? I can see some hands go up, and then I'll invite you to, to share. Uh, if no one else does, I can start. My Please, segment. Brad. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you. I oh, someone, sorry. I just see. I just seen a, somebody's put the mess. I think John had his hand up. I can't see everybody. So if you use if you use the virtual one, I, it'll be easier for me to to invite you to speak. So John, do you want to share? I can't see you, John. Hmm. 
Does John want to share? No. Oh, this is John Leonard. I'm 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 just uh, reacting to uh, previous speakers. Right. Okay. Fine. That's fine. That because yeah, because there's an actual you know if you use the virtual hand up, then it's easier for me to spot. But if you're just giving thumbs up, uh, that's fine. Sorry, I'm, Brad. I'm using that's... the applause feature. <laughs> right. Fantastic. Thank you, Brad. Over to you. So I will go ahead. Let me know when you guys can see my. That's fine. Your slides have come through. Yep. Screen and I will try and go into presentation mode if it will let me. There we go. Can everyone see that okay or is it too That's big? Great. No, it's come through. Fantastic. Okay. So this is just, um, you know, my stuff. Most of it is the early part. Um, I, there were a couple other pictures I was hoping to add, but the site's down. So when I first met Mike, um, we were both in Chicago. He was living in Park Ridge. I was in like the Arlington Heights area. And he was literally working right across the street from me uh, on the other side of Lake Cook Road. And I was at Motorola Automotive. And we and Bob Martin and um, I think there were a couple other folks at this Booch and Rumbau on tour event because that was the beginnings of what was gonna be UML, only they hadn't had that name yet and they didn't have Ivar Jakobsen yet. So they were trying to decide between Rumbooch or Boochbau, but I met Mike there briefly and um, they formed a mailing list called OTUG for Object Technology Users Group. And you know, Mike and I and Uncle Bob were very frequent contributors to that at the time. And people used to post their signatures like where they worked and stuff. And Mike realized he was across the street from me. And so he like and arranged a uh, a face-to-face -face meeting in a lunch place nearby that's it's actually not there anymore, but that's kind of how we first um, got involved. And uh, from that point on, we were like, you know, we lived close together. We had similar interests. So we were all about patterns and, and object-oriented stuff on Usenet and mail lists and so forth. And uh, about later that same year, Mike mentioned this book to me that came out. He's like, oh man, this is mind blowing stuff. You got to read this. And that's, of course, where, you know, he and I kind of originally got the, this notion of the name Agile. There were other books on um, organizational change and learning organizations at the time that used words like nimble and learning organization and stuff. But when this one came out, it was like, that's it. And, you know, I totally would have missed it. Mike was you know, even more voracious of a book reader than I was. And so we actually started using the term quite a bit back and forth. Um, but it wasn't really catching on with too many other people yet. I had started using it in some of my work. Uh, also around that same time, the very first WikiWeb uh, which was by Ward Cunningham, now called the C2 Wiki. And just this kind of interesting thing, you know, Mike was trying to, I always found Mike to be very inclusive, always trying to bring in other people's opinions and stuff. Um, you know, and back at that time, you know, many other folks were kind of a bit more interested in perhaps coming up with what was, you know, their thing and their way. And Mike was always trying to pull in other people's uh, views and opinions and stuff, which is you know, something I really cherish about him, even more so now in retrospect. And I wasn't comfortable. I mean, the wiki was this place where people were doing discussions and stuff rather than just writing things and doing lots of commentary. And I only just gotten accepted and like to the, to the patterns community recently. And um, so he like started my own wiki page for me. <laughs> And, and I, I left, you know, the part that he put there um, intact the way it was, even though I was sort of not quite comfortable with it, but I was like really honored that he described me that way. But that was kind of how I got active on the wiki. And that's also where a lot of uh, some of the early XP patterns and uh, org patterns that later made it into Scrum and stuff, a lot of those things first got documented. <clears throat> Um, we also went to a lot of the patterns conferences together. There were these patterns up conferences called PLOP. 
And the most um, well-known one was the one that was just about 200 miles south of us in uh, Urbana-Champaign. So Mike and I drove separately the first year, but the next few years we would carpool together. We'd meet together with our families for lunch. Uh, our wives would uh, go back. One would drive the other home. He and I would carpool. And in uh, Plop 1996, he had this pattern language called Coherent BPR. he had actually also had a, a book based on this that never ended up getting published, even though he had almost all the material done with SIGS publishers, which were the same folks that produced the, um, like the C++ report and, you know, later on the Java report and stuff like that. And again, and I put the footnote here, the, the post-it note, you know, he had these, you know, very interesting, colorful pictures. He actually had another one that I didn't include that looked like it was, it was deliberately meant to look like a, a, a dynamic organism with like mitochondria and stuff. I should, I should dig that up and put it in later. But even when he was trying to, you know, put all these patterns together, if you look at these gray boxes, once again, he wasn't just keeping stuff exclusive to his work. He was trying to thread in, include, you know, all these other people, Bob Haugen, who was also in the patterns group with us, um, Gerard Mazeros, um, Bob Hammer, who worked with COPE at Bell Labs, Ivor Jakobsen, Gerald Mazaros again. Um, I forget Anderson's first name, shame on me. Um, Steve Burchick and I had patterns on configuration management. He was adding those. Alistair, Neil Harrison, Linda Rising, David Delano. It was literally threading like two or three dozen different people's stuff all together. And just, you know, that's the kind of inclusive and collaborative person that he was. Um, this is us earlier. This is me before I was fat. Um, at uh, Plot 97, Mike and I were in the same group along with Steve Burchuk. Uh, and I can give you the names of those people later. That's uh, Neil Harrison, David DeKel, uh, Linda Rising, for those who don't know, she was kind of one of the first women in Agile. And then over on the other side, same, uh, actually the year after Chili Plop, 1998, um, Mike headed up the, uh, the org patterns workshop at Chili Plop. That was actually, I wish I had a picture of the scenery there. That was held at a real dude ranch in Arizona. It was, they had cacti, they had tumbleweeds. And to this day, it is the only place I ever remember being where I had no allergies to anything. It was like, I woke up after the first night and it's like, oh, I can breathe clearly. It's, you know, not that there isn't stuff elsewhere in Arizona I was allergic to, but it's like, oh my gosh, is this what the rest of the world feels like? Um, Plop 98, we were in the same workshop group again. That's when I had the great big branching patterns stuff with like 60 patterns and their variations and like two dozen pitfalls. But this was also the very first Scrum paper that described the set of practices that make up Scrum. And I'm pretty sure Mike was the one that, that found that particular picture. Um, again, he was, you know, you see his name's at the top because he was, he didn't necessarily contribute the most, but he was kind of the lead author and driving and again, pulling people together, not just Ken and Jeff. And uh, that picture, I think, is like a certain kind of Mandelbrot fractal. Mike was always into, you know, complex adaptive systems, Santa Fe project, agent theory and stuff. And uh, in 1997, Mike and I, along with um, Jim Copeland and also to a lesser extent, Bob Martin and um, Ron Crocker, who was in Motorola, he actually wrote one of the first scaled XP methods, but once again, the book never actually got published. But we formed this group in 1997. Uh, we used to have a lot of um, imitation or, or um, like precursor or preview workshops, because I don't know if folks know, but when you went to the PLOP conferences, you weren't presenting a paper. You were putting forward a draft of a paper 
for the honor of being in the room and shutting up and being a fly in the wall while anywhere from six to 12 experts would critique your paper and rip it to shreds. At the very end, you got a chance to speak only to ask people clarifying questions about what they said, not to defend, not to argue, not to debate, but all those patterns conferences, they were all pattern writers workshops. You didn't go there with a the finished paper. You went there with something that was, you know, just enough to inspect and adapt and critique. And so we would go through a lot of people's patterns. In fact, when we first started, we started off with Jim Copeland's uh, first edition of the org pattern stuff. And it was in a lot of those meetings later. Mike kind of did most of the coordination running the first year. I ran the second year. Um, but, you know, these days we'd call it a meetup. Uh, we met once a month over in the borders in Schaumburg, which isn't there anymore. Um, I just have a little bit of early scrum stuff here, so I'm going to skip that because I think there might be some other people here that have a little bit more of that. I showed a little bit of already with that, um, that 1998 paper. Um, this is the one where I... There were pictures and pages that were available online. I was going to cut and paste in here. I'll, I'll put them in later when the site's back up. But um, right before um, Mike and the others left for Snowbird, uh, Mike was communicating with me because they had a mailing list going on. And I actually didn't even know that I wasn't part of the mailing list. Mike had actually set it up so that it would not forward but bounce the things to me. <laughs> So that it looked like I was part of it. So I thought I was in on the early discussions of when they were first planning that that event and stuff. And then there's like a invite list and all of that. But I couldn't go. Originally, it was going to be like in Chicago or someplace warm, either which would have been fine with me. But I couldn't go over to Snowbird, and I don't ski, and I have bad knees. So you know, Mike called me on the phone a couple of days before, and we strategized about you know. What does he think is going to happen? What does he want to happen? Um, you know, and asking me, you know, what things do I want him to make sure he brings to the table to represent as part of that? Once again, being very inclusive. One of the things I love most about him. That's most of my experience uh, with Mike in those early years. I have some other things I can share later when we get to like post 2016, but. <clears throat> I was that's fascinating. That was fascinating, Brad. Thank you. Great for me to see because a lot of that's real education for me. So yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So I think it'd be good to 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 just build on some of that. So Brad talked about some of the, the early stuff there, and I think we were talking about the, the patterns work and perhaps some work within the sort of complex adaptive system space. Does anybody want to just? chat a little bit around that, contribute something. If you, again, if you could raise your hand, we'll, we'll invite you in to speak. i use the Zoom facility because then I can I can spot you more easily. Otherwise, I'm sifting through lots of faces. Somebody want to do that? Somebody got a story there? Somebody would like to share? No, I don't see. Brad, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just looking to, um, there were some other folks that were hoping to be able to attend that could have spoken to that. Right. Um, you know, again, Mike was really into complex adaptive systems. I don't know if anyone knows about something called the Santa Fe Project, but they did a bunch of stuff with that as well. And Mike actually used to code some of this stuff up with, you know, libraries or other stuff he got elsewhere online. Um, I think it was like the second or third Chicago Agile Developers Meeting. And we went by the name Chad, by the way, because, you know, for those who remember the 2000 US presidential election, um, there were the, the hanging Chads that uh, you know, might have ended up costing the vote in uh, Florida going for, and the governor at the time was, of course, the, uh, what turned out to be the president-elect's brother. And I actually didn't care for that name. We had a candidate list and all the object mentor people and, and uh, some others voted for Chad. So I went with the rest of the group. 
but I think it was the second or third Chad meeting where um, Mike spoke on that. He had created this company called X Breed, along with another one called Balanced Agility, where he was putting together patterns like a superset of what the Scrum patterns are specifically for software development, because he didn't want to limit Scrum by making it be about software, but he wanted to have this um, larger set that was for a more specific domain. And so that's what he was doing with XBreed. And he actually had a CAS simulation um, that he showed us then. Uh, I wish I could, it, it almost looked like something from uh, the 60s. It was like psychedelic. I think a lot of people ended up um, getting visually assaulted by it. It was sort of funny because it was very mind blowing, but that particular slide deck was all over the place. But he was just so into this really complex mathematical stuff. And I had a graduate degree in math and I could barely keep up with the guy. He knew like the quantum mechanics stuff. Um, so he did a bunch of stuff there. Uh, yes, Daniel, Santa Fe Institute. Yeah, there was a Santa Fe project as well, but um, you're right, the Santa Fe Institute was the website. Thank you for reminding me about that. Fantastic. Thanks, Brad. That was uh, great to hear. So it'd be nice to, to, to maybe move on to some of the early early Scrum scrum days, the XP and maybe some of the stuff with the C2 wiki. I thought it'd be nice to explore some of that. Can somebody share some some of their thoughts, experiences on, on that? That particular era. I've got anybody Is in the call. Anybody else here from the early days of uh, like patterns in Agile? Uh, bummer. No, yeah, I don't think so. I'd have more that I could show there, but um, that's the the C two wiki is not working for me so well. it was working for me last night so apologies i would have had more to provide there okay that's fine Brad. thank you so i think i think we're going to move on to the sort of more of the enterprise scrum period which is the yeah so the so period of come from 2012 kind of on of mike's mike's work so that's quite a, a kind of important phase, um, certainly for, for how things evolved in the industry as well. We've got folk who'd like to share some stories from that, that phase in that particular era, working with Mike, supporting that work, being part of that community. Got any hands? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see Sue. I've got, a, I've got a thumb. I'm looking for hands up, but I see, I see a thumb. Would you like to say a few words, Sue? Please. Yes. Yes. I Thank will. you. Thank you. So actually, I'm probably jumping ahead because I got to know Mike towards maybe last one and a half year of his life when he really wanted to go big on enterprise scrum. And he got really, really, he worked really hard and, and he really believed in it, right? As you heard that singing, that customer is number one, right? He believed in that, right? And then he, based on all this work that he had done with the patterns and everything, he wanted to form the whole organization based on customer, right? So he was like, customer segment is like number one. Right. Um, and so, you know, I was like, first, like, it didn't really, I didn't understand why he wants to make all this into like customer base, right? Because there could be something else. But he understood how you can make the whole organization based on a network rather than like hierarchical, right? Because, and that's why he mentioned a subsumption, right? So like, when he first mentioned about subsumption, right? What does he mean by that, right? So, so I, I attended his classes like three times. You know, I went to Chicago. I went to his class twice in New York. I took his classes 
second classes that he was giving on enterprise scrum and like and then he, he was like so as everybody was saying inclusive meaning that he want to include as many people understanding what he was doing right and he wanted to include everybody on this whole this bandwagon uh evangelizing the whole industry to see what he see so that not only he benefits it but he everybody else benefit on the way so it was like amazing and but the thing was that he is so genius right so it is not easy to understand him it's like that's why i attended three times and then he said like once you pay once you don't have to pay again and i'm somewhat like keen in a way that like once i really get in I can get into it, right? So I was very fortunate to like just pick his brain as to like what he's talking about, right? And and the way I met him first when he came to the New York City when he wanted to evangelize enterprise Scrum at a meetup, which Jin Jandal um, hosted, right? So I went there and I was like, he was, he was talking so many things because enterprise Scrum is not just about restructuring the organization. He also realized that it is about the whole organization. And if it's a whole organization, you have to clean up the vocabulary of Scrum because Scrum is software, right? So if you want to do it for the whole organization, you cannot use Scrum Master. You cannot use all these terms, right? So he cleaned it up. And then, but then he was telling everything in a like one hour. I'm like, my brain was, you know, exploded because of so much information. But I, yeah, like somebody, someone else. And so I am dedicated actually to, if, to really deliver what I learned from him to rest of the world. So I'm like, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, when I first hear from what Mike was doing, I said, Mike, we gotta have a meetup. <laughs> in New York, I'm located in New York City, right? So I created a meetup group and he said, okay, sure. Yeah, that sounds great, right? So once I did that, he did the same thing in Chicago. He created a meetup group in Chicago and did an enterprise scrum. So I was so excited and so uh, uh, so uh, thrilled to be on, on this boat together, on this ship together with him to make it work for everybody. And then, the, you know, at the same time, make money as well, right? But that the focus is, is really have this, 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 um, this desire to help others by through this framework, right? And I think that's what stems from, I think, from what Mike was saying, because I asked him. And, and not only that, he, he's, 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 uh, his desire to, to enjoy life to the fullest, right? One time we went to this uh, uh, Mexican restaurant in Chicago, and, but then there is this Mexican restaurant, they did this, some kind of steak, uh, for he, this steak, um, uh, uh, what, I, I forget, I, I don't in Mexican season say it that much. But anyway, it was very expensive. And it's like, oh, we just order it. And then he would pick up the tap all the time. I was kept telling Mike, you shouldn't do that. We should split it up, right? But uh, he was one person who's always picking up the taps. It's, it was unbelievable. I was like thinking, oh my God, how would I swipe? <laughs> because like, you know what I mean? But anyway, I miss him so much and I want us to move on and I want us to continue his legacy, not let it go away for his genius work that he's done. Fantastic. Thank you, Sue. That was a wonderful share. Thank you very much. I've got a couple other hands up. Simon, you had your hand up for a while. Can I? Can I? Can I come to you next? I don't see Simon. Here I am. Thanks. Uh, hi, Simon. I uh, you had your hand up. Waiting very patiently. Thank you. Would you Thanks like to share? Lot. Yes, I'd love to. I mean, it's not specifically Thanks. about Enterprise Scrum. Um, can you hear me yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, you're coming through. Excellent. I, yeah, I've brilliant. got very few slides which I'd just like to share. Yeah, feel free, if please. That's possible. Okay, that looks like yeah, it's going to. You work. should be okay. Yeah, we should be fine. Great. And yeah, no, they're coming. They're coming through now. Yep. Yeah. So I, <clears throat> I think it was late. It must have been. Oops, excuse me. It must have been the late nineties when I um I read that paper that Brad referred to earlier, 
So that was that was a fantastic. Um, I mean, that was really eye opening for me at the time. I was um, doing some experiments with lightweight processes. I was living in Berlin. I'd met Martin Fowler, I think, in ninety eight, ninety nine uh, at Java One, and um, around that sort of time, also read this read this paper. So her, her first became aware of Mike and I thought oh that's a very English sounding surname so I'm sure he's well of English descent or something like that um and then of course his name really came to the fore through uh, was that in 2001 or 2002 certainly within a few a few months of uh, publication I uh, got that book by then I was um, starting to help clients to, to adopt adopt scrum and then I actually came into contact with him, really heard about him for the, the, the next time. It was either in 2009 or 2010 at the Scrum Gathering in Orlando. Scrum Gathering was held two years in a row. I think they got a special, special deal at the same resort. And that was around, as far as I'm aware, that was around the, the time that Mike started to, to really get involved in, in Scrum Alliance. He was He was not... I mean, he was very well known as a, as a name, of course, but you didn't see him at Scrum Alliance conferences. But Mike was introduced to the attendees during the open space kickoff, I think, by Harrison Owen. But I may, I know that Harrison actually, um, the, the inventor of open space, did actually facilitate one, one of the open spaces then. And I know I rushed over to the to the uh, the queue of many people wanting to shake his hand because of course he's a legendary guy in the in our community um and then rolling forward to 2013 i had the pleasure of um, sitting on the tac on the tac the trainer approval committee of uh, scrum alliance with mike i think it was at bar in barcelona barcelona it might have been in paris uh, the year before and Mike was asking the candidates a really interesting question. What is Scrum? You know, getting to the core of them. Um, they, they really should know, of course. And basically, if they didn't say empirical, if they didn't say maximizing business value, if they didn't say complex, it didn't have to be exactly these words, but something like that, they failed. Um, and, you know, we've certainly support that view. I mean, I think this gets to the really core of what Scrums is really about. Um, so, I mean, that was, um, that was a, you know, real pleasure to, to meet her, you know, to, to be on the, the panel with him then, and uh, we got to know each other a little bit better. And uh, moving forward, you know, when he, when he finally started to, to ro really roll out Enterprise Scrum, um, we, we actually, we actually persuaded him to come to Berlin. Um, to to run an enterprise scrum workshop uh, with myself and some of my colleagues and we we even managed to get a couple of clients to attend and uh we talked a lot about subsumption so i noticed there was a slide in in brad's deck about if you don't understand subsumption you don't understand scrum i think that was a slide that that i i created but it's definitely a quote a quote from mike um, in some early 2017 at an Enter Enterprise Scrum workshop in Berlin, where I was living at the time. And um, for those who don't know what subsumption is, um, definitely recommend to read about it. And it's very much related to the work that Jeff Sutherland did in the early 90s. And he was inspired by Rodney Brooks, who at the time was founding the company or experimenting with robots and uh, found and uh, founded the company that later became iRobot. So it's very much inspired by the um, by the the architecture of um, Roomba robots, for example. Moving forward, later in 2017, um, we um, attended, like many many of us here, I attended the. Um, the uh, Enterprise Scrum meeting or conference in uh, in Chicago. That was fantastic. It was a, it was a great experience. It was first my first time in Chicago, I think. Um, and what I remember especially is Mike's incredible generosity. He ended on buying us sandwiches when we arrived in a really great um, sort of carvery 
shop, sandwich shop. And we, and I think many, many of the people here were at that uh, visit to the rooftop bar where I took this photo. Um, and I mean, it's incredible, but Mike, Mike just wouldn't take no for an answer when we said, no, you can't buy drinks for all of us. So very, very generous guy. Um, I think he, he actually invested a lot of money in that conference as well. Um, and uh, it was a great event. It's just a tremendous shame that we didn't uh, get to, uh, to follow that up with the next one. So a great, from my point of view, a great mentor, a great friend, um, very much missed, um, but uh, his work goes on. His, um, he's inspired my work, he's inspired the work of many of us. And uh, thanks very much, Mike. Fantastic, Simon, thank you. That was wonderful. Daniel, I think you had your hand up, you? Daniel. Yeah, I can. Hello, I, sir. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, uh, good to see you. Nice to see you and to see all of you, actually, and especially uh, Barbara and the three girls. I'm especially uh, enjoying the all the kinetic action over there in that corner of the screen. Um, <laughs> I just want you to know. Um, so, so yeah. So, hi, everyone. Um, I met Mike in New York City at the, I don't know, one of the early Enterprise Scrum classes. And um, I was there with many of you and um, uh, Stacia Viscardi and some others. And um, that's where I met Mike. And uh, Mike and I got talking about this idea of engaging people. And I, I referred to something called engagement models. I told him I was interested in building some models for engaging people. And he was very interested in that. And we got into a, quite a discussion about patterns at the time. And uh, just like Simon's saying, um, Mike just totally insisted on um, paying for everything. And then later we ended up going to that Chicago conference and um, I knew it was gonna be kind of low attended um so i made these shirts right uh that have like the, the 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 beatles logo but spelled in the beatles name and i gave them to everyone and um i suggested that everyone wear them under the regular shirts you know the regular clothing like this you know and then we gave him his shirt and we all took off our outer shirts and we took this picture and um he got visibly cathartic there um he didn't cry, but he was right on the, he was just holding it together, you know. Uh, he's a very feeling, sensing guy, and he just kind of lost it there for a minute. And many of you that are there know, you know, how that went. Um, so Mike was also very encouraging to me personally. I was at a point where um, I needed a little bit of encouragement, and Mike just stepped right in and provided that at a time and I really needed it. So totally generous guy, emotionally, financially, and in every other way, very interested in what you have to say. And the one thing about Mike that I found extremely interesting was he would zing in like three or four or five questions and just kind of listen. And I always, I always thought that was like super interesting. He was very curious and searching for like um, ideas that would work. You know, that's the thing I took away uh, from him. And um, I'm not a physics guy or a math guy. So I, you know, totally was not at his level there. Um, and I was just always super impressed by Mike. Anytime I wanted to talk with him, I could always get him on the phone and we would talk sometimes for, you know, over an hour at a time. Um, so that's my story on Mike and in the enterprise scrum thing. The last thing I would say about enterprise scrum is that it was a pattern of patterns. Mike just used it as a container to generalize the software patterns to for general social interactions, right? And he's very, very interested in the generalization of patterns up and out of software into into general business. Um, so that's my that's my story with about about Mike. Um, I miss Mike. I miss Mike. Thank, a lot. thank, thank you, Daniel. Fantastic, wonderful share. Um, anybody else like to share? Still got time. See a few words. If you put your you put your hand up, then it would be 
I can I can kind of spot you, your virtual hand, as it were. Anybody like to share? Is there any other sort of aspect of perhaps Mike's work that we have not touched on yet that people would like to explore or raise or talk about? Have you missed anything else? I'm going to look to you, Brad, because we've had a few conversations ahead of this. Anything else you think we could explore? You want me to share again? If you've got, yeah, if you've got something you'd, you'd like to say, Sue, Sue's got her hand up as well now, so maybe we could. Why don't you go ahead first, Sue? Uh, I just wanted to add that you also see the huge um, potential that what, how Enterprise Scrum can help with the business agility, right? So he attended the business agility conference that was uh, held by, uh, by the Ivan. Uh, and he was so excited about that, but he was also yet very disappointed at the conference because he said these people still haven't figured it out. So they don't know what they're talking about, right? Because he realized all these patterns and he look at how it's gonna work out together. But people over there, the people who were the speakers, they didn't really have that connection that Mike had and he put it in the enterprise scrum. So uh, I just wanted to add that. And I'm also trying, I am pre preparing a video to uh, kind of summarize what I learned from uh, Mike. Hopefully uh, by the time, uh, on, you know, before his anniversary coming up in March. Fantastic, thanks. Got a few hands up now, let me just. Brianna, hi. Would you like Hi, to share something? Me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, apologies. As we're talking, um, I'm going through my old notes um, from a, a, a class I took back in um, 2018. And the, the gentleman who taught it was a gentleman by the name of Todd Little. And he spoke highly of Mike Beadle. And this was already after he had passed. And I didn't know my, I, I knew nothing of him. But I also was learning that he was quite, and it gets into sort of Sue's comments, he was quite misunderstood at times. And I'm kind of curious um, from those who knew him better, could you share what was the biggest misunderstandings of him and his work and his great works? Well, it's a fantastic question. Thank you. Can somebody can, can somebody share, shed some light on that? Yeah, it's really simple. Mike was just always 10 to 20 years ahead of everybody. That's, that's basically what it was. So that's my story and the one I'm sticking with. Yeah, either that or he was at least one or two more levels of meta in his thinking than what you were already thinking in your own head. It's like, oh, I went meta. It's like, well, he went meta, meta, meta. And, you know, sometimes it comes to you naturally. I guess when you have that PhD in high energy physics, you can jump in and out of quantum mechanics in your head, move to uh, gravity and black holes, and then the complex adaptive systems, and then subsumption architecture. Most of us mere mortals can't do that in the blink of an eye, but Mike absolutely could. And he could do it while he was playing the piano. Well said. Thanks, Brad. Rick, you, you've got your hand up. Please share. Yeah, and um, both Simon and Brad have, have put up that uh, thing about um, uh, Mike uh, bringing up subsumption all the time, and that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the heart of what was misunderstood about Mike's enterprise scrum. And make, maybe even Michael Herman could explain it better than I can. But uh, the thing that I think that was most misunderstood about Mike's work is, uh, around enterprise scrum was that oh, it's just another way to scale agility. Um, I, I've always said from the first day Mike uh, Mike told me what subsumption was and what enterprise scrum was, I said, Mike, the worst part about what you've done here is you've you've incorporated into the name of this scrum. It's not scrum. It's something much larger than scrum. It's something so much larger than anybody else has tried to grapple with understanding. You've kind of 
you've kind of shackled yourself to this word scrum that people already have an assumption that they know what scrum is. So many people have misunderstood scrum already. Now you're trying to have them wrap their heads around the, to the total vision of what agility is. This is like, you know, this is uh, enterprise scrum was so big and so all encompassing that I'd say a handful of people understood what he was talking about. Well, okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate that. I could, Somebody else I want to add to in. that? Build on that? I, nope. I could jump in there as I, as Rick just yeah, sort please. of... Hi, Michael. <laughs> to tossed it to me. <laughs> uh, thanks, Rick. Um, there's, you know, the, the stuff... The stuff he was talking about was so smart, but I, it's like it wasn't thinking for him. It was being. He, so he, you know, he would tell stories about, I would go back to these guys in wherever where I taught before and they said, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna say we're breaking all the rules, we're doing it wrong. And he didn't. And you know, he said things like, if it's not uh, fun, it's not scrum. And this isn't what was in my limited experience in the, the Agile community. This wasn't how people were thinking and talking. <laughs> um, this was a way of being um, as much as a way to do work, um, a, a way to, to just look around and understand the work we were in. Um, so that I think think was probably different. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's, that's one of the things, well, I, I remember the first, the first of the classes, the enterprise scrum classes I was in uh, with him, he gave us the, the, the task, which was basically to populate the canvas. And he had, he had, spent a you know an hour or something talking and telling us all this stuff and so we were processing all this and trying to figure out how to go about the the work in the canvas and he came back in after 20 minutes or something and he looked and there's not a single sticky on the wall and he picks up one of the the uh the canvas papers on the thing he's like guys guys it's just a canvas and so for him the stuff that would you know, I would sit for four days with him through both of the classes in a week, and I was mush in my brain for another week. But for him, it was just so clear, so obvious, as if you say, oh, wait, my shoulder itches. It's just, you know, like something, it's just, you're just aware of it without even having to think about it. And uh, so it was just, it was, it was just so, um, to him, it should have been just so easy. So anyway, th those are uh, some little bits that, that stand That's out. It. That was great. Thanks for that. I think everybody loved the, if it's not fun, it's not scrum. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Did we else want to... is about, the other one, I remember the, in the one thing we, we snapped a picture in a Zoom of, holding up uh, the picture that agile is about people was another, you know, it was always about the people. We're still there. That's, 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 what we're, that's what we're trying to encourage. Keep it about the people, keep it about the connections, keep it about the interactions, keep it about the collaboration, focus on that and you'll do good. Fantastic. Anybody else want to share? Build on what, Mike's, what Michael's covered. Anybody like to do that? No one else has anything. I have some, I think I have some other stuff plus some pictures of some of the things that um, Sue and um, Mike uh, were just talking about. Right, okay, great. I can yeah. share those again. It's coming through now, yep. Okay, actually, this is covering a, a period of a gap. There were these set of conferences and an effort called Scrum Plop, 
and they had some various um, you know, meetings over the years. Uh, this one's from 2010. This is 2011. Uh, I forget which those are, but you know, those are pictures of Mike there. If you can see, are you able to see the one on the right or is it obscured by? No, it's okay. No, the it's lower fine. right one. No, it's okay. Yeah, because that was you know, a larger effort that was, was going on that was really in some ways an extension of that coherent BPR diagram where it's, again, always trying to flesh out more of those throw that. Um, this is when Mike first started that Enterprise Scrum Facebook group. And again, he just, he pulled all these people in. His, his first message to the Facebook group too was, you know, I've added you all to this list. I want a diverse set of opinions and perspectives. And, you know, as long as you stay away from like religion, the Pope and politics and some other stuff and stay respectful. And if you don't want to be here, you know, I won't be offended. Please remove yourself. And then the first thing he did was get a group discussion going on. Yeah, not that Mike wasn't capable of putting together probably a, a better definition all by himself, uh, but he pulled all these people in for that. And I just, I think he even used this in a lot of his other business agility and enterprise stuff as well. He's got me in there. He's got Lowell Lindstrom, who used to be with Object Mentor, and then was, um, you can see Mike Herman's name there probably a few other people. There's Rick, just another example of that. And um, this was the Business Agility Conference 2017 stuff. Plus, um, so Sue, were you at these first? These were, this was that for the first Enterprise Scrum Meetup in Chicago. Oops. Yes, yes. <laughs> I go, okay. <laughs> There's me. I'm only slightly fat. That's um, Ahmed Ave. Uh, I think you're in one of these, Rick. I can't remember. And then uh, is this the um, the place you were talking about? Because that's you, right, Sue? Yes, yes. Is that that's the uh, the restaurant you were talking about or is that a different one? This is it. Do you not hear me? Yes. Yep, and there you That's are again. Sorry now, Alex, that was uh, too spicy for her, I think, just next to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't handle the spicy food. <laughs> we occasionally see Mike, uh, not, not one of those like lethally hot peppers, but once in a while um, when I was eating with him and he was getting something off of the hot menu, whereas I was looking for the mild stuff. He'd take one of those hot peppers and he'd just kind of like chew on it or teeth on it a bit. And his face didn't make much of an expression, but you might see just a little, you know, tiny bit a bead of water come up at, on one side of his eyes and just a little smile. Ooh, that's nice before he'd go for like the, might go for his drink or the yogurt right afterwards. Um, this was in January 2018, um, uh, Cal One leadership training. There's Mike trying to stand in the back instead of in the front where he probably belongs. That's Michael Sahoda and that's Audrey. That's me, I'm fat now. And uh, Mike still managed to maintain more of his uh, figure there, but being unassuming in the back. And Mike was the one that actually invited, you know, Michael Sahota and Audrey in to host the training as well. So they were there because of, of him, but I was grateful for that as well. Yeah, I think that's all I had. I do have some examples of some of those. Can people still see this? Yes, yeah, people able to see these. So these were some you know, specific tweets or posts I found of Mike and Ulysses. If you're here, did you want to speak to this or? My my English is not so good, but um, I think that a lot of work. that is okay. <laughs> uh, just um, I I 
I I just say grateful that I met Mike, and I help and he helped me grow and 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 he helped me connect with people as Daniel, as Pierre, as Her Michael Herman, a lot of people that without him I don't have the I I would not able to to contact them. Uh, I I just remember one 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 thing uh, at the the last class I was in Chicago. Uh, before his 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 death, I, I remember I lost my 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 plane, and I said, oh, "What the fuck? I lost my plane." I buy I buy the plane again because I lost it to go to go in, uh, to that class. So I went to that class, and I remember when when the class finished, I said to Mike, "Mike, can I give you a feedback?" I say feedback. Okay, yes, and. Uh, we we can wait until until the the class finish and and we can talk and then when the when the class finish uh my, my idea of of the feedback with him was how, what is happening why why we are not collaborating in in doing in doing uh the book in doing the 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 trainings and i wanted to do a feedback and at the end i said to mike i don't i don't know what to say to you i don't have any feedback anymore Though, so I don't, I don't say nothing to him, uh, but but I want to 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 just understand why. So Mike was very good at, at uniting a lot of talents. So we have a group with a lot of very high talented people that are just waiting for Mike. But for me, it's I don't know. I just uh, wanted to 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 say something to just reflect Mike about why things are not moving um and and i just i just didn't they say nothing and and i when 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 he died like three weeks before or four weeks weeks before i i felt like i don't know how to say it. it's what well, it's difficult um but mike is, is is a great man and we need to remember him in our actions in how we include people how is uh how love the people that act with him but that work with him i don't know i don't know what else to say uh i love mike and i love the people around him you did great actually I was, yesterday i was watching the latest episode of wandavision and there's a scene in there where vision says to wanda you know what is grief after all if not the perseverance of love and i was you know, immediately thinking of oh man now i'm gonna lose it <laughs> sorry i was immediately thinking of this you know upcoming thing the next day when i heard that <clears throat> okay that uh, you were warned no spoilers so yeah no spoilers We've also, folks, just while Brad's working through his, his, his doc, we've also shared the Jamboard link in the chat. So if, you're, um, if you've got some other stuff you'd like to share, some other images or some memories, um, some quotes, some things you've got yourself, um, you're, you're welcome to do so. Um, feel free to add to the Jamboard. Thank you. This was another tweet I liked a lot from Mike. Um, particularly because when I was 11 years old, I also wanted to be a physicist. <laughs> Didn't end up being that way for me. And I wanted to be a professional dancer, which I actually was for seven years. Uh, I played guitar, I wouldn't say I was a musician, but you know, this was another one of those things he said that really kind of spoke out to me and a lot of other people. And it it's not even specifically about Agile, it's about life. <laughs> There was that other one. I think uh, Mike had mentioned this. Mike Herman. If it's not fun, it's not Scrum. <laughs> Dan, a little blast from the past for you. Do you remember that one? Are you still there? You want to speak to that at all or the context around it? Do we 
still have Mant Dan Mezik or did yeah, sorry, just, what was the, uh, what was the question? Was the question again? Sorry about that. Uh, this is a particular. This was a um, was it a tweet or a uh, Facebook post that Mike said in response to you? Well, yeah. Let me give you a little. Let me give you the details. Okay, please do. Here's how it went. I knew Mike Beadle's name from the 1996 book, Agile Software Development with Scrum with, with Ken Schwaber, but I never knew who the guy was. And he wasn't very vocal or anything. He was sort of a background person during the whole you know beginning boom of the thing, right? And then all of a sudden he showed up. It's like Mike Beadle comes alive, right? Around this enterprise Scrum stuff. And <clears throat> I showed up and I started to talk with him about the the, the things I was working on. And, you know, I was getting a little vocal. Like I tried to, I, I had a, I had a current belief at that time that engagement was essential for any real org level change. That the people have to be engaged for any of the stuff to actually work. And that this was not being addressed whatsoever in the agile community. And I brought it up to Mike and Mike's like, I agree completely. What else you got? And I said, well, I'm working on these models. You know, they're built on patterns. I call them engagement models. He's like, tell me more about this. And he went, I, and he would, he would, he was probing, probing, probing. And then, you know, he's like, he, I, I totally want to work with you on this. I'm like, well, you know, one way you could really help as a signatory is by saying a few things in the public square. That would help a lot. And that's what he started to do. So there's this tweet and there's other things that he said in the enterprise scrum group. And I think uh, Scott uh, Sievright has the link to something that he said and i want to just let everyone know at that time it was 2016 or so i was pretty much out of energy and out of enthusiasm and i felt like the timing just wasn't right to discuss engagement whatsoever i wasn't getting any feedback from anyone in any kind of leadership role any kind of authority space in the agile world they were just ignoring it and mike's like no 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 don't quit i'll help you I'm like, okay, how will you help? He goes, you tell me how you want me to help you, I'll help you. That's what he said. And then he started putting out these tweets and putting out stuff on Facebook and saying things. And we talked a lot about the patterns in enterprise scrum and how this engagement piece was something he wanted to integrate. And um, that's where this stuff came from, right? It came from conversations on the phone, emails back and forth, and of course, going to the class and later on going to the conference, uh, showing up with the t-shirt. Many of you have this t-shirt um, and you know who you are. Um, anyone who was in Chicago plus Barbara got the shirt. Um, so, you know, there was that. So Mike was a huge encourager and he was also very brave and had a lot of courage and he, he how can I say this? He had a complete disregard for risk if he felt that the principle of the thing was more important at the time. He's like, ah, I just don't care. He'd just go for the principle of the thing. That's just kind of how he was. So I put a link actually in the chat of him talking at, a, um, at an enterprise scrum meetup. And those of you that, that got it, um, you're welcome for the shirt. Um, go ahead and just go to 2750 um, on that video and listen to what he says about Scrum. I don't want to ruin it for you, but he had this idea of providing configuration templates. So go ahead and read uh, or listen to what he had to say in the video because the, the video is really quite fascinating, the one I put in the chat there. But go ahead and read that. And I, I hope that helps. And uh, that's the end of my comments for now. Cool. Well, thank you. Here's another one. Not, I don't think it was part of the same conversation, but. Business agility. Uh, yeah, that was the, uh, this was the, the Facebook post. I think that was the very first one on the enterprise scrum group where he says, Forgive me, you know, I added you all by default. <laughs> Agile is a different but stable balance. Okay, so that's those. And then um, if nobody has anything else, I have a few of the other things. <laughs> 
So this is part of the table of contents for what was kind of the draft of some of the, the enterprise scrum stuff. And you can see some of what um, Mike Herman was talking about. And you just read through the table of contents. It's like, that's some pretty heady stuff there. Um, did you want to add to anything, Mike Herman? Uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm thinking about the some of the things I've learned in working with what I learned from Mike and going back to um, I mean, I, mean I, I read through this at one point he he told me I, I read through all this stuff and he said you know I give it to everybody and, and nobody reads through it. <laughs> nobody really reads it I said, no, I read the whole thing. And I came back with all these notes and stuff. So we, we had a laugh about that. But as I, as I went, you know, kept working on things afterward, um, one of the things I noticed that I don't think I ever heard him say, but I, I realized sometime later that um, the canvas was, you know, I stood back one day and realized that it was everything that was in, everything that was in Scrum was in the canvas. All the ceremonies, all the, the artifacts was in the Scrum, the Enterprise Scrum board. And he never presented it as, as that, that I remember, but it was all just naturally embedded there. And the other thing and I don't know that this is really about what you were showing, Brad, but it was what was on my mind at the moment you said my name. <laughs> um, the, uh, in, in distilling all of the canvases that Mike had for different situations into a single one that I could, or, or two, um, portfolio and scaling that I could share with people uh, easily and sort of always have in my back pocket and and often I'll follow open space events and it, just invite people to go ahead take all your notes and put them in the canvas and um, what I noticed is that in terms of the the ease and and the natural way this stuff works what I what I've learned is that I think the transparency piece, the, hey guys, it's just a canvas, get over that hump of making everything visible on the canvas. And then the prioritization happens naturally. And then once you've prioritized, the uh, uh, selection and commitment happens naturally. And then with that, the, the delivery happens naturally. And then it's an, a natural thing to stand back and review and improve, just like we did going back to the huddle, playing football in the front yard, saying, hey, why didn't you hit me? I was open. I mean, it, it, it all happens very naturally. And the, the strange thing was to make it all visible in the canvas. Um, and so that to me was the, the crux move that um, made everything else possible and the canvas was just this amazing way to make uh, backlogs visible. Yeah, I might have went through the right pictures. Yeah, well, that like here, like the, 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 the scrum board, um, you know, you've got the, the done canvas is really the, the uh, uh, product increment. If you're not making software, you have to show what you've done somewhere. It has to show up. So there's the done canvas. The, the product backlog and the sprint backlog are there. The ceremonies all kind of merge because you're always looking at the same place. So the rules around ceremonies can, can relax because you're always planning, you're always reviewing and improving. If you, if you see something to improve, you can put it on the board because you have a place to put it. Um, the other thing, you know, Mike used to say, everything that matters goes on the, the canvas. And when I did that with, with uh, uh, after open spaces and people had, had done all this work and they were putting their work, so I said, look, everything that matters from your conversation, put it on the board so that it can, it can have a place 
to a, a way to happen. But the thing I added, and I thought this was very true to what people have been saying about Mike, everyone who matters goes on the board. Every person who matters. So if somebody joins the group and <laughs> Lucia, I love the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone who matters goes on the board. So when somebody joins, they know they're in because their stuff, their ideas get on the board and they're in. And that, that makes, that makes the, the, the bounding of the, the team or the group, um, that makes that, you know, them in uh, and that inclu inclusion. Uh, so, but all, all of these pieces show are, are right there in the canvas, but Mike never pointed them out. I think that it was just his, it just fit as a, as a synthesis of, of all of what he knew about this stuff, how he thought about it. Yeah. There's the subsumption again. Oh, the subsumption stuff, so, yeah. That. And this is an, an operating model actually. I've only ever found, asking around, I've only ever found one person who knew when I when I asked him, okay, you you know what this word means? Do, you, do have you ever heard this word? Only one person has ever said, oh yeah, subsumption. This blah blah blah, blah and had some answer, um, or had heard of it somewhere. I don't know, don't remember if they had an answer, but and it wasn't from Mike. Well, Mike, I mean, I went to so many of these Chicago classes that, uh, like Sue says, we once we were in, we, we he just said keep coming. And uh, so I went to so many of them and everybody walked away scratching their heads. So, so what? <laughs> what like you your head was, had grown like a few inches and was kind of starting to yeah, burn. That was always a, one of the, the biggest things to wrap your head around um, in, in terms of uh, new ideas. You know, the, the other thing that, that occurs to me in that is that we used to, to sort of, you know, reflect a little, you know, kicking stuff around. Um, and I would say, at one point I asked him, you know, is, is the canvas one big open space or is it nine small open spaces in each box or 12, you know, 12 or whatever, how many boxes there were. And the thing about uh, Mike is that, that it was, the answer he was didn't yes. Have any pro he didn't probably, yeah, he didn't have any problems saying, yeah, the canvas, it's just open space. And it's the open space is, you know, flows right into, you know, in my practice, flows right into the canvas. They're, they're, they're not different. And I, I think that was a, a cool thing. It was, it was, it was almost some of the stuff. It was not inclusive because he never saw them separate. He never saw them other than together. A lot of these ideas. So it wasn't so much that he was including as an effort as a. It was just describing what he already saw as whole. Unfolding wholeness. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you for that, Rick. Did you have any stuff that you wanted to add? I don't know if Rick is still I think, here. I think, I think, I think Rick left. He had to call. drop off. He had, he had to drop, yeah, there he had to go. drop off. Lad. Yeah, here's all those configuration stuff that uh, is part of what uh, Mike was creating of, out of some of his conversations from what Dan was saying as well. I, I would like to add that uh, he, Mike was a visionary because this was an open source. This, was, this is a framework based on common, created commons. So we, we, we didn't use that. We, we didn't build uh, other versions of, of enterprise Chrome definition. Even when Mike gave us the paper, we, we, a lot of talented people were there and no one participated in updating this document. 
all was up to Mike, only for Mike. Mike was like a hero fighting alone with everything, but with a lot of people together that can 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 work on the, this 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 created common document. So I don't know the, any any framework uh, for for organization that is open source that can anyone can can do uh, 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 put put some more of your ideas. I think that was really amazing and visionary, and and we start there. I think I know that's just my feeling. My um, I don't know. But, Thanks for sharing. Uh, that is very rare. Ulysses, that's a fantastic suggestion. We should do that. Who so said that? And can you repeat it? I think it was Sue. Park. Huh? Awesome. Great. Great. Anybody else want to share, share anything? Um, happy to, to open it up. And then I'm going to invite um, Barbara to say a few words as we as we close. There was a couple of couple of other things were asked in the chat. If anybody felt they could could uh, contribute or, or speak to some of those things. Thank you, Greg. Glad you were able to join us. So, so somebody want to talk about the a little bit about the the name of Agile and, and, and Mike's sort of involvement and contribution to that at Snowboard? Brad, what what do you what do you what, what do you know I about that? I spoke about it a little bit already um, in mine. Um, I see a uh, comment from Michael Herman. Let's hear from the women, which I agree. Don't. Well, I said the girls because they're little girls. <laughs> they're still girls, Brad. Oh, you mean uh, with Barbara? <laughs> yeah, I meant the girls. <laughs> we're, we're, going, we're going to invite. We're going to invite Barbara to say a few words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In another five About minutes or so. Thirty, and then hopefully. Yeah. Just before we. Just before like we. Barbara close, yeah. After. Yeah, absolutely. It's just giving others the chance to to share and yeah, um, yeah, provide a few updates and things and yeah, share their share their memories. And then I'll, I would like to like to end with a few words from Barbara. Yeah. So is there, is there anything else anybody would like to contribute? I think if we're all good, I, I think Barbara, would you like to? Do you like to say a few? That's lovely. Do you like to say a few words? Sure, if I get a chance. <laughs> very loud here. <laughs> but I wanted to say thank you for organizing this event and thank you for inviting everyone. Uh, it's very nice to see you here. And each of you is very special. And I know this, uh, even this being recorded, so I, I know many people will watch it later because they have many reasons not to, to be here right now, but I appreciate your time uh, just to be here and hear the story of Mike. It's very important for us and I think it's very important for, for our girls. They, they being very creative as you see to entertain you <laughs> as Mike was and um, well Mike uh, did impact my life in a very positive way not only with the girls but just me as a person uh, he changed my life because he taught me how to be positive uh, even when the life sometimes gets hard and this is why um, I'm continue, I'm, I continue to be the best person um, I can be and 
Well, when I was thinking what to say, it was very easy. And now, like, <clears throat> it's hard to talk to, to so, so many people. Yeah. But Mike would never want me to be sad or giving up. Like, if I would give up, he, he, I know he would feel like he lost something, like he's losing, he's not the winner. And Mike was always winning. He always wants, wanted to be uh, the winner, to, to stay positive, to impact as many people as he could. And when I'm having bad days, I'm always thinking what Mike would feel right now if he would see me from the sky. And, and, um, oh, sorry. and then I am always thinking he would never want to me uh, to be sad or cry. So I always have this motivation to just stand up and do my things, do my task, be productive as much as I can. What is not easy with the trickets. <laughs> um, sometimes it's really, it gets really hard. And I'm always distracted at home as a, my, the, the biggest distraction. Uh, but I am doing my best. And I know it makes me happy to see us happy. So we are trying to stay positive. And, and this is something what I can do for him to be, because I'm grateful and thankful for everything he, he taught me over the years we spent together. So I continue to be the best person I, I can be. And I am in the middle of getting my ACC accreditation as ICF coach. And I love doing webinars for students at my university. I am working close with the lecturers at my university. I love sharing my knowledge, everything what I know and learn about Scrum and Agile. It makes me so much fun. And I think I finally found my purpose in my life. And like, if he's dead, mother something, then, then it's me to continue to be, to do something, what he did for his life and sitting in his chair and putting his posters on the wall and read his notice, notices in the books and with the books he, he had wearing his eye watch. It's just like, I feel like he's, maybe he's physically not here, but, I feel his energy is still here and I just need this energy and because I feel like he's alive this way somehow. So I think that's it. Thank you, Barbara. He's in all of us. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely to hear. Lovely to hear. And yeah, I think I think I'd like to to kind of perhaps close there if nobody else has anything else to share. Thanks, Barbara, for all your, your support in helping make this happen. For all the work well, that you did behind all the work all the work you did behind the scenes and, 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 and to Brad for, for, for all the work he did to help make this happen. Uh, and of course to Scott. So um, Scott and Brad and Barbara who did so much work behind the scenes to, to help make the session come together at quite short notice, but it felt very fitting that we that we do this session. Um, given we're marking the, the 20th anniversary. And of course, having heard everyone's contributions in this session, it's very clear that Mike made a tremendous contribution to helping us get to where we are today. Uh, and, and, I, and it was wonderful to hear everyone's contributions and thanks to everyone else who, who shared. Um, it was wonderful to hear and a real education, I'm sure for many of us to hear those stories and to hear the journey and uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for your participation. And uh, yeah, um, just enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you happen to be, whether it's morning, afternoon or evening. I think we've got people joining from all over. So, so thank you. Real privilege to, real privilege to, to have hosted the session. Thank you. Thank you.
that Jamboard link that's on the event page is still going to be up for a bit. So if people still want to, you know, come later on after we close and post stuff there, please feel free. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, th thanks to Ula and Ola and Lucia for all the things they showed us. <laughs> Star sake. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, girls. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks bye -bye. very much. That was, that was beautiful. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks, Barbara. Love to the girls. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Thank you, girls. Bye. 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 Bye.